Snowtracks Television, going strong for 25 years. Snowtracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha, conquer snow. And by FXR Racing, maximum versatility for all conditions. For the first time in a couple seasons, we actually got some really good snow in my area. I mean, we're talking a couple feet of snow on the ground. So when the opportunity came up to go somewhere else to ride, I was actually a little disappointed because it's like, we're just getting good here at home. Why would I want to leave? But the opportunity to ride was in New Hampshire and I've never been to New Hampshire. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know anything about New Hampshire. I didn't really even know where it was located other than on the East Coast. It's really not that far from home for me. It was only about a nine hour drive. And it's kind of nestled away in this little, this little pocket that I know is good for snow. So even if it's half as much as they say it is, it's still going to be good. So let's just go check it out. It's such a beautiful spot where Tall Timbers is located, right in the forest. They got tons of really nice looking cabins. The rooms we stayed in were connected to the lodge and were just beautiful. This is really a snowmobile mecca. I mean, you can tell just by the trailers and trucks in the parking lot and the sleds parked all over the yard that this is where people come to snowmobile, even on a Tuesday. Unloaded the sleds out of our trailer and then we met up with the crew that we were gonna be riding with. And our original contact for this trip was Nick Bostonek, who is a regional sales manager for Polaris in this area. Nick brought along with him a good friend of his, Heath Davis, who is a district retail manager for Polaris as well. And he was gonna be kind of our off-trail guide on the second day. The big cheese for today's ride, though, was gonna be Len Johnson, who is really close friends with Nick, has been for many, many years, and is what Polaris calls a brand ambassador. He doesn't work for Polaris, but he is a very close contact with Polaris and gives them a lot of feedback. He was gonna be our guide for the trail day because he's local and knows the trails better than pretty much anybody else around here. Then we'll jump down on the trail, do a loop, come up four miles, go up to the scenic vista. And from there, we'll head to Postbuck and have lunch. Get rolling so if we wanna get some views off of these uh, scenic vistas. We wanted snow tracks to be a part of this experience for many reasons. So one, uh, I've never had the opportunity to share this beautiful North Country with them. Uh, but secondly, they do such a phenomenal job working alongside with Polaris and, and providing unbiased uh, reports and feedback on our products as well as our competitors. I think that uh, Luke and team uh, do a great job at uh, helping us understand uh, you know, what everybody wants. Now we are gonna do a loop through Pittsburgh, work our date way down through Dixville, up to Dixville Peak. And one of the reasons I wanted to bring you guys there is because it's got some really epic views and it's challenging. And Len had like a 200 mile day planned for us that we were gonna travel through Vermont, through Maine, see every possible site that you could see in the area. And unfortunately, we had to chop that down a little bit because we do have a TV show to produce and that takes time. But the trails are really, they're vast. When you start looking on a map, there is a lot of trails intertwined through the area. I mean, we were on lakes in some points. We were on narrow trails that were bush trails, even some single track. Because I ride Polaris snowmobiles and I take my time to get them set up so they they're perfect for the conditions of that day or whatever it is. And that's what's nice about a Polaris is the adjustability, but I'll ride with other guys who are riding other brands, which are great. But I'm like, try my brand, try what I'm riding. And I give them, I hand them the key and go ahead and try it out, take it for a burn. And we'll go out and ride and switch back and forth all day long between all these different manufacturers and stuff. And then you listen for the feedback, what they like, what they don't like. And I provide that feedback information back to Polaris.
The more I learn about New Hampshire, the more I really start to like this state. On their license plate, it says live free or die. That's their slogan. I mean, you don't get much more America than that, right? But a couple other things I learned. A, you can open carry anywhere. And also they have no sales tax and no income tax. So, I mean, talk about a free state to just go and live your life however you want. Being up on top of the mountain was really beautiful. I mean, it was a little bit overcast and snowy, so the views weren't as good as what they said they could be, but that's pretty typical and that's something I completely understand. But, you know, the windmills are right there, which is kind of cool to see. Hands are frozen. Yep. So you're on Dixville Peak right now. They call these birds Canadian jays, which is kind of funny. It's like Canadian bacon, but you know, Len said, just hold your hand out. Dive ball and you lose. Put some food in your hand and hold it out and they'll land. I'm like, that's not even gonna happen. I could stand here for a week and maybe one would land. People have tried this before. He wasn't kidding. These, these birds would swoop down and land on your hand like two and three at a time. It was so weird. It was really neat. It was a neat experience on the mountain. Well, an ambassador for Polaris is really somebody that uh, lives and rides and, and, and just lives the ultimate experience that we, we provide on our products, right? does their best to share their experiences with other riders so that we can introduce new riders to our sport or other riders that might not be on a Polaris product, have them better understand what we're all about, the ride, the handling, you know, the flotation, so many things that we, uh, we have going for us right now. And, you know, I, again, having been here for 16 years, but since we've launched Axis, it's just been an awesome ride. And I can't even tell you, we're so thrilled with the, the chassis. And now you, you add the 850 Patriot in there. And it's just a man, talk about a recipe for success. So I own a 2019 Polaris Indy XC 850 with the Patriot motor and was blown away. The suspension, the handling, and the engine. The fun factor that Polaris delivers is completely above and beyond what I experienced with other snowmobiles. Now, other brands make stuff that rides good, yada, yada. But the fun factor that Polaris provides is a step above that, in my opinion. On our ride back from the mountain lookout, we, we came upon a weird spot, this great big hotel, like, like old hotel that's, I guess, got a lot of history in the area. We came in on a golf course that had been abandoned years ago and was all overgrown. And it was just such a cool spot, honestly, this big old building there just sitting kind of dilapidated. People don't do this anymore. Yeah. They stay home and watch TV. They don't go out and go to these big resorts. That was well, back in the 20s, 30s. To make it a snowmobile destination, that makes sense, because this is like the central mecca of snowmobiling for here, right? It is. This would be an awesome resort for snowmobiling. Yeah. And ski. Anybody who's watched snow tracks, watched me on snow tracks, knows me at all, knows that the Switchback Assault is one of my all-time favorite snowmobiles. I like to kind of think of it as the Swiss Army knife of sleds. It can do anything. And it got really proven uh, on the trails in New Hampshire. I mean, we rode a hundred miles on awesome trails all day and I was riding a switchback assault with a two inch paddle and couldn't have been happier. The 850 was just ripping. It was amazing as they all are. And I could keep up with these guys on their full blown trail sleds. So certainly that says a lot for the switchback in my opinion. 94.7, it's a little bit of track spin. I think you were off trail a bit, so I think you were. I, along with everybody else, was starving. I'm a Lester. We get very hangry if we don't eat. So I was getting pretty hangry and pretty pretty uh, famished. So uh, the guys took us to this little local place called the Buck Grub Pizza Pub. Fantastic name, by the way. I Just to end the day off with some food. And it was a great spot. I mean, it was full of snowmobilers. And I haven't seen a, a restaurant that full of snowmobilers in a long time. It just had a really cool kind of you know, early 90s vibe to it, but with better sleds. Uh, and, and I love that. That That's the, the heyday of snowmobiling, and it really kind of brought it all back being here in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto, a unique world of equipment, tools, and more. Waking up on my second day in New Hampshire, the plan for the day was to ride off trails. And I was very curious to see just how good off trail riding around here could be. We were promised about a foot of fresh snow was gonna fall the night while we were sleeping. About six inches came, which is still darn good. But where we were headed to, apparently the conditions were gonna be a lot deeper. So the plan for the day is to drive about 20 minutes from the lodge and unload our sleds at a trailhead and then ride the sleds 
into Maine to the area we were going to be riding off trail. So we're up in northern Pittsburgh right now near the Canadian border. We're going to hop on East Inlet down here. We're going to take that about 12 miles out into the woods and then we're going to hop into Maine and rip some good stuff out that way. And the reason we had to do that is actually a very important one. It is not legal to ride off trail in New Hampshire unless you have access to private land or have permission to be on private land. But in Maine, you can ride off trail pretty much anywhere and it's completely cool. I'm rusty at backcountry. I'm a trail guy, but I'm gonna suck it up and get it done and have some fun. And I'm wearing my trail gear because I don't have backcountry gear. But I do have an Assault 144, so I should be okay. And perfect weather, perfect temperature, we brought with us a Switchback Assault and an Indy XC, and the idea was that our camera guy was gonna ride the Indy XC on the first day, I'd ride the Assault both days, but really an RMK was necessary. And luckily for me, Nick and Heath both brought extra RMKs, so there was never a sled missing for what we wanted to do. The snow's a whole different level up here. When, I mean, we're 30 minutes from our lodge, and I mean, it's just a complete difference in depth. Yeah. As I said, Len is a perfectionist. Yeah, man. Everything's got to be tipped off for Len. We got our own trailside tech today. How do you beat that? You can't. We do a little belt deflection because this belt means lack of power. He knows snowmobiles inside and out. I mean, I've ridden with him over the last 20 years. I've seen him tear an engine apart on the, on the trail, uh, you know, and put it right back together. But again, he's a, he's a heck of a rider, a heck of an ambassador to the sport. It's an honor to have him out here with us. This is why everybody needs a win. <laughs> Man, there was a lot of snow. I mean, they promised us like eight feet on flat ground, and I think that's probably under-exaggerated. There was nothing but snow. And the RMKs had really no issues getting wherever we wanted to go. They wanted to bring us up into this tight tree area that was kind of on the side of a hill. It wasn't really steep, but the trees were closer together than, than they are a lot of times. So getting there with no track paths to follow, it ended up causing a little bit of a problem. So I rode the Switchback Assault, and I let Mark, my camera guy, ride the RMK, and I ended up getting the Assault wicked buried, like bad buried. So luckily for me, Mark is not just the camera guy, but he's also a friend, and he wasn't gonna leave me stranded there to dig myself out for the entire day. So he came over, and, and we got the Switchback Assault out. We got her rolling again and uh, got the group back together and, and made it to the spot we wanted to get to. But if there's one thing I learned real quick, that Maine carries some heavy duty snow, man, in these backcountry areas. Once we got up on the side of the hill, we kind of set up a bit of a base camp with the camera sleds and everybody kind of had a location. Uh, and then Nick and Heath and I, we just took off and we're ripping through the trees and we kind of were just playing in the deep snow, finding spots to get the skis up. A couple of us got stuck here and there in the trees and it was a really, really fun time. Uh, you know, build up some sweat, fog a few goggles and uh, some, just some great stories and great laughs. And this is, this is really what it's all about. Just getting out with your, your friends and uh, enjoying the good weather, the wildlife. Pittsburgh is a great place to ride. It's over the years evolved into what I call one of the ultimate snowmobile destinations in New England. And a lot of it's because it's geared towards the snowmobile. You've got great accommodations, like tall timbers, and great food, the Buck Rub Pub and all the other places around town. But you've got gas stations, you've got a repair shop, a local dealer that sells parts, people that are just, come on up, come up and, and enjoy Pittsburgh. A couple of the areas where we're in, I will say, were really deep, deeper than a switchback assault was ever intended to ride in, but it still got there. And once we were there and you could get some momentum and keep the sled moving, it was a blast to ride. There was a couple spots I had to jump on an 850 RMK, and that was cool too. And, and, and I mean, those are great sleds. Everybody knows how awesome they are in the mountains. But a bunch of the areas we were in, I wanted to ride the assault because it's just such a fun, challenging sled to ride in really deep snow. It gets the skis up like crazy, it wheelies, it can pop over stuff and catch air. If you were to pick one area where you could almost rely on snow year in and year out, this is it. We're sitting on a bunch of snow, but I would hazard a guess we're on top of six, eight feet of snow right now. And uh, it's just gonna keep on coming and coming throughout the year. It's, uh, it's incredible. Stories like this one are 
such a fun time. I mean, I left home where there was lots of snow on the ground, went to a state I'd never been to and knew almost nothing about, found even more snow, and we had some of the best trail riding I've ever done, some of the best off-trail riding I've ever done. Got to meet new friends, Nick, Heath, and Len, all around the exact kind of a, a trip that you want when you go snowmobiling. But I will say, these trails are also open side by side, so these guys already know I'm coming back in the summer. Closed captioning of snow tracks is sponsored by Triton Trailers, built for adventure. Few words get snowmobilers as revved up as ready to drag race, smoke belts, line up toe to toe, ski to ski, in an all out horsepower brawl to the death as this word. And while the options are few, there's a new horse in the stable. The word is turbo, and the sled is the 2019 Skidoo Renegade XRS 900 Ace Turbo. It's a sled we've been waiting for for years, as it's been secretly veiled going through the development process. We all had high hopes that Skidoo would bring out a horsepower crusher sled. Heck, lots of folks figured it might be a triple or even a thousand cc twin to resurrect the old Mach-Z. But in the end, none were right, and the horsepower numbers were different than you might have expected. The horsepower produced by the 900 Ace Turbo is a buck 50. And while a lot of people think that just because it says turbo on the hood, it's got to compete with other turbos in the industry, you're going to need to reset your thinking. If Skidoo wanted to build a 200 horsepower turbo, they would have. But I'm guessing the reason they brought a smooth running, very efficient 900 Ace Turbo at 150 horse is because that's where the market is calling for one. And given their current position and sales numbers, they're probably right. The 900 Turbo in this Skidoo is very similar to the 900 Turbo found in the Can-Am Maverick X3, but it's not the same. However, it does share some similarities that are very important. The positioning of the turbo is so close to the exhaust, like literally less than six inches from the cylinders, is similar to the Maverick where by having a smaller, high spooling turbo so close, you can reduce the turbo lag to almost nothing and deliver hard hitting performance efficiently and quickly. And that's a huge key to making a turbo sled that folks really enjoy riding. And when you link up that quick reacting turbo to the Rev G4 chassis, well, you get something pretty incredible. Keep in mind, this was the first time that a four stroke turbo had been put into the G4 chassis at the factory. So there was definitely some fitment work to be done. The G4 widebody is the new look for the turbo model and it allows the turbo to fit properly. Being very reminiscent of the original Rev widebody that housed the Mach-Z, the wider body panels and puffed up front end carry a mean looking stance that's love or hate. Now something that's really important to remember is that this sled, the 900 Ace Turbo, is a replacement for the 1200 Fortec. It's not a competitor for the Yamaha and Articat Turbo. The Renegade XRS 137 platform and the Ace Turbo are sweet. It hits so nice and builds steam like a freight train. The turbo lag is minimal at best, and the hesitation we all couldn't stand with the 1200 Fortec, yeah, it's nowhere to be found. It's pretty surprising, this is only a 900 under the hood. At 25% less displacement than the 1200, this engine feels so much better. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty concerned about the handling of the G4 chassis with all this extra weight of a four-stroke motor over the skis, but I was pleasantly surprised how it rides. Yeah, it's heavier than the 850, and yes, there is more ski pressure, which we feel is definitely the most in the industry, but it works very well, and in XRS clothes with the sweet KYB reservoirs, you get excellent compliance, and the front end does not seem to get overdriven, even when pushing it. We did find in aggressive cornering situations, when you catch something on the outside ski, the inside ski does lift much harder than the 850, and causes you to need to tap the brake to settle it down, or exaggerate your body English that much more. Now all this to say it's a four stroke and that's expected. More weight up front has always meant a more pronounced inside ski lift from any sled, no matter the manufacturer. While you can only get a 900 Ace Turbo in 2019 in the 137 inch length, we figure that's probably gonna change in upcoming seasons. But for right now, 
137 seems to fit the bill just right. As always, the R-Motion 137-inch rail skid floats through everything we throw at it. Love or hate our opinion, we tell the truth, and this rear skid is where the buck stops. I can absolutely rip through chatter, whoops, or cruise at big digits along the smooth top, and the R-Motion puts up no fuss. Should I need a little bit more big bump compliance? I'm onto the tunnel adjusters for some added compression and preload and back at it in seconds. It's quite surprising how the extra body width and increased girth of this sled don't bother me like they once did on the older chassis with the 1200 Fortec. I find myself forgetting that I'm actually riding a four stroke, but yet I'm enjoying all the benefits of a four stroke with a performance near a two stroke big bore. Will it run with an 800 class sled? Maybe. Do I care now that I'm getting used to it? Not at all. I've always been a two-stroke rider. I run off trail quite a bit, and while I don't think this engine package will be the off-trail or mountain rider's dream, I do think it's perfectly positioned in the Renegade XRS clothing. It sacrifices nothing, delivers impressive performance that's very usable on trail, and has the reliability of a Rotax four-stroke. And in my books, that's a win-win-win. With the performance this sled delivers, I can now see 600-class two-stroke riders looking for a bit more reliability as well as performance confidently making the switch to a four-stroke. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles, MBRP Power Sports, race-inspired, trail-proven, and by the wide world of Arctic Hat. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the like button and then subscribe to Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel that's constantly being updated with fresh content.